Okay, I'm running out of paper. Let's get another piece of paper. Here's what you're going to end up with. Now, as I said, you're going to take your output from across here. That's where you're going to get this sawtooth waveform. All we want to do is filter that sawtooth waveform into something approximating a sine wave. Not terribly difficult. We put another resistor there. our diode and another capacitor. This capacitor and this resistor are going to set the frequency of this waveform. This resistor and this capacitor are going to filter the voltage across this diode. So, what we've got now are one, two, three, four resistors, two caps, uh, UJT, you can get them a Radio Shack for like 59 cents, or at least you could in 1920 when I was a teenager. And I think that's about it. Except, now you want to power it, and you want to power it from the AC line. Well, I'll tell you what, this circuit right here, running off of a lithium battery, one of those little coin cells, would probably run a very, very, very long time if you set this right and this right. Because this is a high impedance device, very low current. Now it's going to draw a good bit of current at this part of the cycle. Still, it's not going to draw a heck of a lot. And I've made throwies with an LED just taped across a coin cell. And those things have stayed lit with a blue LED on them for literally months. Months and months and just they keep burning. They get dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. So let's say this isn't going to last months. But running off of a CR2032 battery, this thing right here as it is would probably run for at least a week or two. But that's okay. You want to run it from the AC line? Let's look at a super secret circuit that everybody should know about and nobody seems to. I can't even find the stupid thing on the internet. I was just going to give you a link and now I end up making this video. But that's okay. If you want to power from the AC line, Here's all you got to do. You don't need a transformer or any of that junk. It's not that difficult. Here's your AC line. This is the line cord. This is the hot line or the white wire. Okay. This has 120 volts on it. This is, you know, it doesn't feel very good if you touch it. And this is your black wire. No, scratch that. This is your black wire. This is your white wire. It doesn't really matter unless you're wearing a wall socket. But anyways, the white wire is the neutral, the earth the ground, whatever. It's the other wire in the wall socket. This is the black one, the hot one, the one that grabs you when you get a hold of it, okay? Normally this would go into a transformer and you know you got a transformer and you got a diode bridge and all that crap and okay great. So now we got this big old box to drive this stupid little circuit that draws like a milliamp of current on average. So here's what we do. We make a capacitor and we use that into a half wave rectifier. 
and then we've got our filter capacitor there and now we've got however much voltage you want yeah that looks really scary doesn't it it looks like oh my gosh if I touch this I'm gonna get shocked I'm gonna get electrocuted well you see the thing is this is 60 Hertz okay and capacitors are reactive just like inductors so all we have to do is we have to make this capacitor small enough XC to limit the current if we limit the current into our circuit and we should know about how much current our circuits gonna draw let's say it's gonna draw on average uh, 10 milliamps okay if it draws on average 10 milliamps well that's just like putting a hundred ohm resistor here right well it is if it's a one volt circuit you get the idea we can figure out the current through this node because it's all in series all right so what we need to do is we want to make sure that XC here drops our voltage down to let's say 6 volts at 10 milliamps not that difficult start with like a 0.47 microfarad cap here make sure it's a high voltage cap because it's going to have the 200 volts or so swing across it okay make sure that this one is too both of these should be the same value more or less okay and they should both be at least 200 volt caps wouldn't hurt anything if you wanted to use 400 volt caps make sure that this is at least a 1 in 4003 diode because it's got to sustain maybe as much as 250 PIV okay there you go so now you've got a really cheap little power supply circuit this is our theor theoretical load it's not actually there and this here is the positive voltage to this and this here is the ground to this as long as you put all of this in a box or tape it up or do something to where your little brother's not going to be sticking his fingers in here and getting snake bit everything will be fine in fact the circuit here is inherently short circuit protected it's very very safe if you are getting to learn about electronics or you know anything about electronics work it out and you'll see it's a very cool circuit I don't know why it doesn't get more attention it should it saves a lot of money maybe it's a conspiracy by the transformer industry maybe it's because everybody uses cheap switching power supplies no days so nobody cares anyways it doesn't use any chips it uses two capacitors and a diode which brings our total parts count to four capacitors a UJT four resistors a rectifier diode and an LED that can't be more than a buck and a half worth of parts and you got everything that you need to do exactly what you mentioned in your video well I hope that this answers your question I hope this is what you're looking for if it's not well thanks for your time hope you get something out of it anyways